Hi, I'm Rich Haidu with IABM, and today we're talking to a couple of North American dealers and a manufacturer, and what we're trying to uh, evaluate a little bit is the relationship between dealers and manufacturers and how the landscape has changed in selling products. Uh, there was a time when manufacturers at NAB sold everything direct. That time has changed. And there was a time when most dealers called only on broadcasters, and that's changed. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions. And uh, first of all, from, from the manufacturer, Thomas Tang from Apantech, tell us a little bit about your company. Give us a little overview. Well, Apantech, we uh, make multi-viewers, extenders, converters, and um, extenders, video wall. We make various different products. and. Uh, one of the things we try to do, actually, is through our dealer network and come up with products that our customers really need. Instead of, you know, without the dealers, we'll never be able to come up with some of these products. So that's been very, very important to us. Right. Right. And Thomas, did you ever sell direct, or were you you were always kind of a dealer-oriented manufacturer? Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, we've always relied on our dealers, and we believe in our dealers. Again. Um, without our dealers, there's so much information that we don't get. And um, we always work with dealers, even when a customer asks us directly, will you sell direct? Even if we're forced to direct, to sell a direct right. uh, project, we come back and compensate our dealer. What would you say is the, is the makeup of your sales? In other words, what percentage is to pure broadcast and what percentage is to non-broadcast customers? 60-40. Uh, 60% 60 to broadcasters and 40% to non-broadcasters. Right. Okay. And we have dealers in the room with us. We have John Curtis from uh, CTG. John, would you describe a little bit of CTG and, and uh, how you started and your growth? Absolutely. CTG is a systems integrator from Atlanta, Georgia. We focus on traditional broadcast, uh, sports uh, video replays, uh, as well as AV. Um, got about 60 people uh, in the Atlanta office, uh, but we, we really focus on bringing solutions to our clients uh, that are outside of the box. Uh, we are, we're not the guys who simply put uh, boxes in and wire them up. We really work on workflow and, and really solving problems that our clients don't even know that they have a lot of times. Uh, one of our, our, our strong suits is, uh, you know, really our team members, uh, we have team members who are extremely committed to getting these problems taken care of for uh, our clients, but also working with our partner manufacturers to really bring solutions, um, both from an R&D standpoint um, and in new product placement, um, you know, to, to try and uh, you know, build a better mousetrap. Um, and we really focus on dealing with several different vendors and several different manufacturers to bring a, a product or a solution to a client that, that they may not get to um, just by looking at, at dealers directly or, or a specific product or a single product. And how many offices do you have? Uh, CTG has the, the main corporate office in Atlanta. We've got sales offices. Uh, we've got three sales offices spread through uh, the southeast, uh, down in Florida, in Jacksonville, uh, and also down in New Orleans. So, And how much of your work, you do sports stuff too, don't you? That's, yes. That's a big, big part of the... Uh, what you do? Yes, yeah, sports has become a big part of the landscape for CTG, and, and you want to talk about collaborative environments between you know, manufacturers and end users. We get into sporting venues, and uh, a lot of these guys are looking for broadcast solutions, but they're not broadcasters. Um, and the interoperability of systems that we find, not just from a production standpoint, but as we're now moving into IPTV, uh, digital signage, all these systems coming under one, uh, you know, one <coughs> roof, as it may be for production, we find it's very, very important to really work with our, our, you know, our vendors to get these solutions for everybody. And, and that's a, it's an interesting model to see move now. Um, and a lot of the vendors we partner with are the same thing. They, they, don't, uh, they don't look for direct sales. They, they come to us as a system integrator because they understand the value that we add to our end users and back to the manufacturer as well to come up with these different solutions that you don't get uh, with just single products. I want to introduce Tim Bach. Tim is um, with Digital Resources in Dallas. Tim, tell us a little bit about uh, how you started the business and how long you've been in business. Uh, sure, sure. Well, yeah. Well, we're a, a system, system integrator as well. We uh, are in uh, uh, the South Central region of the U.S., uh, based in South Lake, Texas, which is kind of a, a neutral area for covering uh, uh, the territory. Um, similar to what John was uh, speaking to as far as uh, uh, our, our company model is working with vendors that have a, 
you know, uh, an interest in uh, doing integration and um, teaming up as a partnership and doing long-term uh, services. And uh, it's just real important that we uh, we work with companies in integration fashions um, on these projects. And uh, our projects vary. We're, we we've done uh, broadcast uh, studios to uh, live streaming. Um, um, IPTV type applications, and we're um, also doing a lot of city, uh, state government level uh, projects now. So there is a definite blend of what traditional broadcast solutions are and what, I guess, traditionally known as AV solutions are. And there is a there is a good blend there. Okay, I want to introduce Joe, Joe Scrivo. Joe is with BSE in Toronto, Ontario. And Joe's a little, little different model because you actually cover all of Canada. That is correct. We have uh, three offices in Canada, one in, Vanc in British Columbia, Vancouver area, one in Montreal, and one in Toronto. And we also do systems integration as well as you know, box sales of products to, to various customers. Not unlike Tim and, and John, we, we come up with solutions for customers where we integrate various products together to solve a problem for customers and we've been doing systems integration both domestically and internationally for under BSE banner for at least 16 years or 17 years and under under the previous I guess uh, ownership for almost 60 years right. So, right. and it's a little different I think in Canada in that American manufacturers or international manufacturers sometimes you have exclusive rights to the product so you, you might sell more boxes just because uh, a, a manufacturer would go to you and say you have all of Canada, and that might include the broadcast space too, correct? That is part of the, the part of the challenge has become as the, as the industry has changed and manufacturers have changed, they, they, they haven't adopted the same changes in the model when it comes to how they deal with resellers. Because right. they look at Canada, they pull out the map and they go, wow, it's a big territory, there must be a lot of opportunities up there because it's geographically it's as big as the U.S. Well, unfortunately, it's not because in the U.S. you got 350 million people, in Canada you got 35 million people, right. and you got five cities where all the business happens. And the rest of it is a whole lot of nothing. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> nice country, though. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah, country. Yeah, no beautiful country. <laughs> so one of the questions I have is how, to, uh, and John, I'll ask you this first, how has the product mix changed from 10 or 15 years ago? What, what do you see now uh, product-wise? Product-wise, uh, the, the big change continues to be, you know, IP, IP, IP. Um, you know, it, it really as recently as five years ago, um, you know, we were still pulling 80% uh, coaxial cable on our installation jobs. Um, we're down now to you know probably 60 to 70% of the wiring on installations is uh, is over a category six or uh, the the other big trend is not only IP but fiber. A everything is moving fiber based. It's it's becoming uh, purely packetized data transmissions. Um, you know, for us, it's working with partners that that understand that transition and uh, and also having technicians and, uh, and and really a crew that can work in that high level. Um, it's not good enough to go get guys off the street who can just go put BNCs and RCAs uh, you know, and XLRs on cables. We need guys that are BICSI certified, they need to know how to fusion splice, they need to know how to work with blown fiber, um, they need to understand the, the you know, techniques to properly terminate RJ45s to get the high level bandwidth that video is, is, is you know, requiring now, especially as we've seen here at NAB this year moving into 12 gig. Uh, 4K transmission, uh, that's that's the big change. And, and everybody, I think, five years ago said this is 10 years out. Right. And I think we're seeing at the show now, it, it's here now. Um, and, and the transition from standard definition to high definition uh, took a lot longer than everybody thought. Um, but the transition from high def to 4K and, and ultra high def is, it's happening at a rapid pace. Tim, you know, 10, 15 years ago, products were more expensive. A camera used to be seventy-five thousand. Now it's seventy-five hundred. <laughs> How do you deal with that? How do you know? Yeah. Is, is has the market expanded enough? Yeah, it's it's expanded. The uh, the, the you know the, the products are getting better and cheaper. Um, so it's it, you know we're not really in a box sales mode. Right. So we have to really study and look for solutions to, to offer solutions and services and make that up by doing more of an integration solution more so than a box sale. And that's uh, and that's really key and. And, and, and diversifying our business, not only in, in uh, broadcast, but AV, and being specialized in those areas. So you're looking at other things like programming and, and services and uh, on-site support, I right. think, as a, as a means to where those, where those product margins are gone. Right. And, and do you see, I mean, I know, you know the church market is larger, and mm -hmm. 
uh, cities and state government and all that, has, has, the, has the reduction in price contributed probably to the fact that there are more users? I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. I definitely think so. Yeah. I mean, look at editing as an example. You can do a lot of that on right. your phone now. Right. You know, and right. It's, uh, it's crazy where that's where the technology is going, and with right. the IP stuff now, it's uh, you know you, you throw it on a network and put it on a Cisco switch, and you can get it to you know right. a lot of places and right. very high resolutions. Right. You know. and, and Thomas, as a manufacturer, you you have you know there are many people that do multi viewers, for example. Everybody has their own flavor. So you know, how do you continue to innovate when there's a so, so much competition within the market. Well, multi-viewer is only part of our business. However, having a multi-viewer, some of the challenge is not sometimes only the images coming in, it's also the image going out. Right. How do you deliver that to the screen? It could be HDMI, SDI, IP, it could be fiber. So we, instead of making just another multi-viewer, we're also making a small solution. So what do you put into the multi-viewer? Well, it's not just images anymore, right? You have to put in not just SDI, not just HDMI, not just IP. You have to be able to put them all together. Once you have a solution like that, it's very easy to compete. And of course, at the same time, we, we have the pricing challenges. So the pricing challenges, uh, it's a challenge to us, but at the same time, as you said, when we, when we could take the product that used to cost $15,000, we can make it now two or three thousand dollars. We're going to reach more people. Right. More people are going to buy it. But the main thing is to, to 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 maintain that quality. You know, one of the one of the big challenges for us now, and also is more and more AVs coming out. So the AV people have different expectations. But the traditional AV equipment just did not have the ruggedness and the right. reliability. So we bring that value to use the broadcast know-how, the 24-7, right. and we put, in that, put that into the AV environment, it makes a much happier AV customer. Right, right. Joe, is, is educating the customers, since you have so much more equipment that you're selling, and to a wider variety of people, how do you educate the customers? I mean, is that really what a salesperson does now? Is it? It's more of a conversation and a relationship building and, and continually getting them to understand not just a single technology, but various technologies that you bundle together to provide a solution for them. Because as, as each individual item becomes less expensive and easier access, you have to find other things you can bundle together to, to present a, a total solution to a customer. So yes, you do need someone who has the experience, the know-how, and the ability to talk to the customer and educate them and walk them through a scenario. Because a lot of times, they think they know what they want, but challenges are always presented to you in a way that you have to come up with a solution for it. Right, and John, you must have to, as the, as the level of expertise declines in the customer base, because you don't have to be a, you know, a certified engineer to do a lot of this stuff, when it comes to service and support, that must present a challenge also. Absolutely, it's it's uh, you know it's a growing thing, and, and I think uh, that you know the one of the things we are going to see moving more into an IP and an IT centric model is is being able to steal a lot of what the IT departments uh, in, in various different organizations already have in terms of help desk response and ticketing. We're going to have to become much more proactive on those things, and the the ability to respond quickly to customers. Um, they're not going to be able to put in a ticket because their printer doesn't work when the printer is really a camera. Right. Um, you know, the, the, the level of response is going to have to be significantly faster and, and it's a more, uh, you know, it's a higher quality individual. Um, for us, it's training with our techs um, and it's not only the technicians, but training and closeout documentation on projects. Working with manufacturers to get quality documentation on their product, but putting that into a training manual and going through and, and creating super users within these organizations so that they can take this information and be a first line of defense. Of course, when product fails, we go out and actually do the swap, but a lot of times uh, with these complex systems, someone has the wrong checkbox checked. So uh, the, the quicker we can respond to those things, train our users, and, and really that starts at the very beginning with thorough needs analysis. What, what problem are we solving? Because um, there's nothing worse than getting into the pro to the end of the project and you haven't solved the problem. Thomas, as a manufacturer, you have to support the dealers and the customers, and nowadays we're all the same. We want instant <coughs> response right away. As a manufacturer, how do you do that? How do you train 
uh, whatever level of support is is first. Somebody calls you and they have a problem. How do you how do you handle that? Well, one of the things is, of course, when somebody calls, we have a live person answering the phone. That's the most important. From the ten dollar product that we sell to the ten thousand, a hundred thousand dollar product we sell, somebody picks up the phone and walk you through it, and that's really been the big difference is you can always talk to one of us then of course depending on the product if the product is remote accessible we have we, ha we can remotely access the product um, if not sometimes we have to order an item right. and believe it or not sometimes we have to troubleshoot other parts of the equipment I was just at the customer site something was not working I have to step through it and change the BIOS on the computer <coughs> So, but it's so it's not just what you do; right. it's what everybody else does. You have to understand everything. Right. Tim, how important is so? You know, you take on new products. You have to evaluate a product. You have to determine whether you can sell it or not. Then, how do you train on that product? How do your salespeople get knowledge on it? And how much do you rely on a manufacturer? Sure, right. sure. Um, well, both. Uh, um, I think a lot of it used to be uh, they come into your building. You take the time out and you sit there and you get the training. Uh, so that still happens, but I think a lot of it's uh, uh, WebEx training yeah. and, and, and uh, certifications. So we're starting to see a trend. Uh, manufacturers going back to a, you have to be a certified partner to even sell this stuff now, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy because I think that, that makes you an expert in something. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, uh, I think that's a big part of our, our value too and what we can offer to our, 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 our customer base. And, and so the WebEx, I think, is becoming um, um, something that's really important right. and it took a little while for us to kind of adapt to that right. kind of old school I like seeing you in person right um, but that's really effective training yeah. and, and we can do the same thing with our clients too right and, uh, and as far as uh, training our, our, our customers same thing right um, you know we are doing some on-site stuff but our support level is, is you know the more IP we can make it the easier it is to service it because we can remotely go in and troubleshoot before we have to deploy somewhere right yeah. very important right Joe, when you have a manufacturer and you have a customer that's interested in a product, how many times do you have to do a demo and, and how many times can you do a WebEx to show what the product does? It's a unique situation with every product because some products deal very nicely with as a, in a webinar scenario and other products you have to bring on board and on site to the customer. Like for example, we just did robotics with, uh, with a company in our broadcaster in Canada. We had to bring it over from the UK and physically put it in their studio because they want to be able to see it, they want to try it, they want to test it, they want to touch it, they want to see how it works. And there's only, you can't do that for that kind of product. It doesn't work well in a webinar. So it's, it's, it's very unique, it depends on the product. Uh, John, when you're doing the system and the customer says, I want this kind of camera or I want this kind of server, if you have a better idea or a new product, do you suggest that? Is it a collaborative effort? Or does the customer say, this is what I want, and that's it? It's a, it's a very fine line that we walk. And uh, you know, I think it, as integrators, it's something that we, you know, if you can get this right, this is where you get uh, you know, significant growth and revenue. Because you develop that relationship with the client. And, and when they start to trust you, you can feel out when the appropriate time is to go back to them and go, you're about to make a wrong decision. Um, we recommend you do this. You look at this manufacturer, you look at this product. Um, but you do need to know that there are certain times where you know it's it's easier to sell people what they want to buy, right. um, and sometimes that might mean you know making some sacrifice financially. We may not be making as much margin on something, but it's easier to, to, to get the sale than have no sale at all. Um, but for us, it really it's it's all about that relationship and knowing what the client ultimately what their goals are. And, and for us as a company, it's being selective with clients and, and aligning ourselves as a company with clients that share similar goals. Um, ultimately, if we end up with people that, that are not aligned with us, we're just going to be selling a bunch of boxes to people who are going to be unhappy. And, and for us, the referral is everything. <coughs> Only as good as the last job you've done. Um, so that's, that's a very important part of that decision-making process that we go through. I'm going to ask you guys with the dealers a question, and that is, how can manufacturers improve the relationship between the dealer and the manufacturer? What, what's, what's the main thing, what's the main stumbling block, or where do you see it falling down sometimes, or, you know, what, I'll start with you, John. Communication is, is big for us. Um, we, we have a lot of partners that we work with. Um, you know, the big thing for us is, is uh, you know, new products coming out, and our end users are engaged with manufacturers directly. 
key us in. Let us know um, when you know when they they make that phone call, they make that inquiry. Um, you know, and our response email goes out. Uh, just copy us in. Um, it helps us be able to really kind of focus those searches uh, and and really find out what the the use case is that we're trying to solve now. Um, but you know. I think that's probably the biggest thing. Second most would just be follow up, uh, timeliness in, in, in helping us as a, you know, vendor get the quotes out to the clients. You know, as, as the integrator, how how can we get this solved as quick as possible? Um, so communication and speed are my my two big ones. Joe, I echo John's sentiments. Uh, we we follow the same strategy when it comes to how we deal with customers. Uh, and also how we deal with uh, suppliers and manufacturers because if we don't understand what they are trying to achieve and they don't communicate that to us in an effective manner, it's very difficult to maintain that relationship. The other challenge becomes as the industry has changed and manufacturers have changed and recognizing that broadcast isn't the, isn't the only customer, uh, then the relationship with the dealers has to change as well. That part of it still is slow and changing and that needs to change as well as they recognize that you know, broadcast is a very small entity in terms of where their product now fits. And I'm sure that, that Thomas here would, would agree with me that uh, there is now a, a broader market where it used to be very focused. It's now, I mean, you walk around NAB and you can see there's tons of products. How many of them are focused on broadcast or broadcast alone? Not many. Right, exactly. Tim, how about you? Um, I think John and Joseph nailed it pretty well. And um, I think any more, um, a manufacturer can't just send you an email right. thing and think you're up to speed. Um, it doesn't really work that way for us anymore anyway. You know, I think a, I think a phone call anymore is, is you know, back to the traditional yep. communication method is really important. Right. right. Thomas, you have dealers, but how about do you, do you segment the dealers? Do you have dealers in different markets? So would you have somebody in Philadelphia, let's say, who specializes in broadcast and somebody else who specializes in in professional education government or you know how, how do you handle that well at the beginning that was the idea but now not anymore everybody does everything <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Right. And, it, and it's intermixed right. you know a city council has serial digital video now right right but they even have that in a hospital right. so you can't really segregate that anymore right tim where do you see i mean you know um, familiar with you guys sure. obviously from many many years ago when it used to be broadcast where is the where is your market migrating to um, uh, is there is it more AV is it more uh, presentation digital signage where, where do you where's the market going? 100% uh, AV uh, for yeah. us uh, and that kind of incorporates digital signage and, and um, uh, IPTV type solutions you know uh, broadcasts that are going over the web right. designing systems and solutions for that um, city government uh, is a big part of our business right now. There's a lot of change in uh, demand there, um, uh, just just for uh, collaboration and making sure uh, uh, holding cities responsible uh, right. for their meetings and what they're doing. So that's real important, and uh, so that's probably our biggest growth area right now. Mm -hmm. um, it is in that space. Right. Yeah. Right. And and John, you do you probably the same for you guys. Nobody, I think, does as much broadcast. You may be different, Joe, because you're in Canada and you have the franchise for a product that you sell to broadcasters. True, but we also, when we do systems integration work, we do a lot of domestic work, we do a lot of international work. So we work with companies like BBC Seven Net in Australia, Sky New Zealand. So we, we kind of branch out above and beyond. I mean, they're all for what I like to call short-term projects, things like Olympics, World Track and Field and whatnot, which only last two or three weeks. But the amount of work and effort that goes into it is just as much as building a permanent facility for a customer who does, for example, we did a 32 channel master control play out facility in uh, Toronto not that long ago for a customer. Well, so the amount of effort and time that goes into planning and integrating their solution with what you have to offer is just the same and right. it takes just as much work and effort. Right. right. And John, you have, because you have regional offices, you do a lot of system integration work, but do you sell boxes? I mean, there must be, still must be people, all you guys, there must be people who say, I want a camera, I want this camera, and, and that's it. But that's not the, ma the major part of your business now? Absolutely, you know, we, people are always gonna buy boxes, and, and you know, we still wanna be a part of that, but you know, I think the, you know, whether you coin it you know, a blended AV or broadcast in non-traditional environments, I think the big thing that, that we're focusing on is the solutions that we can bring with our people. 
Um, you know, what, what, what is the value add that we can bring to our customers? Um, because they can go buy the boxes anywhere. And, and, you know, the commoditization of equipment is only going to get worse. We're, we're seeing that. We see margins on, on bids and large scale projects going down and down. Uh, you know, so really how can, how can we help our customers with our, our biggest investment, which is our, our human resources and, and our people? Uh, and I think that's where we're going to really see our shift, uh, especially as things start to move down this IP world and we all become part of the IT department at the end of the day. And Tim, so there's been a consolidation, not just with manufacturers, we were talking about Grass Valley, Belden, Miranda, but with uh, resellers also, Diversified has just yeah. bought a bunch of people. And yeah. so, you know, and, and there must be economies of scale. You're a small to medium sized, well entrenched organization. How do you grow? What do you, is, it, is, it, is it through the markets as opposed to geographically? I'm just waiting for a diversified premium to check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can retire? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we just we grow organically, really. You know, we, uh, we look for key acquisitions um, uh, through people, mm -hmm. I think, is our, because, you know, you're only good as the people I think you put in place. Right. Um, and you can't just hire anybody and train them from the ground up anymore. We were talking about that just a little bit because the training, you need to do it, but the training is very long and, and tedious. So uh, we look for new markets. Um, and we have some areas. I mean, broadcast is still a, a good portion of our business. Um, and uh, you know, as the market develops and new new opportunities opportunities come up with this IP uh, stuff that's going to happen, because I think there will be a lot of new stuff happening from this. Right. Um, I think that's really where we're going to go with it and, and try to look for more territory coverage. So. Right. But Texas is a pretty big state, so Texas, Oklahoma, so that's, yeah, that's a lot right. to handle right yeah, there. Yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, you you know you sell all over the world. <clears throat> is is one of your strategies to to have uh, uh, more product in a specific geography? I mean, everybody was hot on China a couple of years ago, you know, expanding to China, but that must present its own set of problems because you have service and support issues in in the rest of the world. But is it? But do you have have you highlighted some geography you think is better than others now or North America North America <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. yeah it's a stable um, you know our products though we, we sell all over the world but not every product sells all over the world right but uh, yeah North America has been our strong market and it has always been our strong market yeah so. right and, yeah I can see that that's it's much easier to service and support and you have to find channels overseas. That's correct. If you're going to sell overseas, you have to find the channels. Right. That's right. John, are you, you know, so you have three, four, five offices. Is it, to do system integration work, to do the sports work you do, doesn't require that you have an office there, does it? I mean, you, you do work outside your geographic area. Right? Absolutely. It, it, I think, uh, you know, for us, it's a strength. Um, we, you know, our people are, are you know, we, we love to get on the road and go find good restaurants and stuff. Um, you know, so from a sales perspective, as, as everything goes, you know, more in this digital realm, no, we don't have to have traditional people out uh, running these things down. Um, you know, we maintain our relationships through consultants and you know, previous clients, letting us know what's coming down the road. So that's very important to us. Um, but there has definitely been a decentralization for us. Um, you know, we, we look for the projects that are interesting, uh, the projects that are challenging. And we take on that kind of work, and I think that's where we've been successful in seeing our growth. Is that we haven't limited ourselves, you know, to Atlanta, the Southeast. Uh, you know, we, we really do look to grow and, and take those challenging projects on. Tim, when you're selling product now, as you do more IP, do you sell Cisco products, for example? We do. Yeah, yeah we do. HP, uh, Cisco. Yeah. All the traditional um, IT products you would do for your for your computer network. Right. Uh, we see uh, evolving in our industry daily. Right. And right. our certifications are getting more challenging, and, and you know, they're not just broadcast and MD and you know all the Infocom and NSCA. It's all a lot of different uh, standards now. Right. So, so really, all you guys are seeing uh, a, a, a coming together of different technologies, and it's more. It's not. I mean, even NAB, it's not just television in the old sense. Right. It's really communication. Yeah. Are you, Thomas? Have you looked at products that are? away from video or are you sticking in that realm? Well, our product always has something to do with video. But uh, the main purpose may be keyboard mouse, but video. Right. So so video adds value to every type of control. Right. But, we, but we also pass other types of data that's necessary right. now to control, to monitor, to get feedback, to log. So video is still the core. Right. 
but uh, everything else is just like Tim was saying. Now we have to understand everything. Right. 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 And and as you do systems, and I'll I'll just close with this question: What do you think you're going to see in general at NAB three to five years from now? Oh, wow. three to five years from now. Uh, well, well, we'll be up to like 20K, yeah. and uh, we're going to be doing on like a single, single mode fiber, yeah. uh, or it'll all be wireless and a million fronts. Um, I think we're going to see more of a move towards uh, integration with the IT world. Um, I, I think that, you know, there's going to be a, a continued growth in, in these specific applications, um, but that merge is going to, to happen more and more. Um, we, we met with some folks that are uh, just this week, who were really they're they're building infrastructure guys, they're network guys, and they said we're here to see what this is all about because we expect this is all going to be under our our domain in terms of, of how these uh, systems deploy facility wide. Um, so I think we're going to see that continued convergence. Uh, it, we're not we're not seeing we're, we're not going to converge in five years. It, it, it's happened now. It's yeah. it's here and right. it's just going to continue. Everybody agree with that probably yes, that absolutely. we're going to see more IT yeah. and and. You, more and more companies are moving towards software-based solutions yeah. with off-the-shelf technology to support it, yeah. and that's just going to continue to happen. Yeah, and there are going to still be a need for very specific types of devices and technologies that address certain needs, but the majority of the stuff, we're seeing it because we do both radio and television, we've seen a lot in the radio side where it's moving more and more to uh, an IT and an IP infrastructure. And television is slowly catching up. I mean, radio and audio has been e audio has been easy to move around. Now, video is getting easier to move around. It's 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 going to happen. As you guys, as as dealers, is it more difficult to deal with a manufacturer who has not been in the video business? Is it tougher to deal with the IT or computer folks as opposed to somebody who's been in video and understands a little bit more about exclusivity or? A little bit. I think. Uh, I think the uh, uh, their understanding of what broadcast really means and what my understanding of what broadcast really means is totally different. Right. Because uh, you know you can't have downtime in broadcast. Right. And I think those uh, those expectations are rolling over to to all everything else we're doing. So you, know, you have a network down and you're doing a broadcast. It's a pretty. It's a pretty. It's a pretty major issue. Yeah. And uh, you know we're one thing on the vendor side. We're seeing a lot more distributors get involved now. Right. And uh, those other distributors are stacking up some talent, uh, and, and they're trying to get their team up to speed. So it's kind of replacing what the vendors and the manufacturers directly used to do. So we're seeing a little bit of that, but more on the AV side than on the broadcast right. side. You know? Right, right. That's a good point. Yeah. The distributors play a, an increasing role yeah. in what you sell because you're selling so much different stuff. How about you, Joe? Yeah. You? Distributors are an, an integral part of the companies that we deal with because of the, not only the, the vast selection of product that they have, but the knowledge base that they have as well. And they want to work with us as partners to understand what they have so we can help move their products and finding different ways of doing that. Whether you know, and It's not just straight up communications or discussions, it's through, you know, we have an e-store now, so if it's finding products that fit nicely into an e-store environment where you because the, the customer base is much more educated now than it used to be, to know exactly what they want. As, as John and Tim have alluded to, sometimes you can you know, take the call and they know exactly what they want at times. If you have a good relationship with somebody, you can say, you know, you're about to make that mistake. You right. want to move into something else. You want to look at another solution. That's not necessarily the right one. Is that the best way you want to spend your money? So, so we're trying to find ways to make it easier for right. So what I'm really hearing is that as a dealer, it's not selling product that's the most important thing. It's providing a solution to the customer if you're just selling a box, you can get it on the internet or yeah, exactly. whatever. Exactly. So that's that's changed from my days when we sold cameras. <laughs> and, you know, you saw, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's so it's right. a lot different. So so the 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 products that you sell are part of a solution that you have to provide for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. No problem. Thanks for you. Thank you. Enjoyed it.